Thank you, Lothika, um, President Vicky, uh, fellow Rotarians. Good morning. It is indeed a privilege and an honor to introduce our guest speaker for today, Dr. Marcus Rani. Uh, Dr. M, uh, he's known as more uh, uh, friendly way, uh, is, a, is a business professional in, health, in healthcare and technology. Uh, over his two years of um, two decades of uh, his career, he has been through various aspects from patient care to um, a wider stage that he has now created working on with a global impact on uh, well-being and systematic change. Marcus's formal education comes from the UK uh, at the uh, University College Medical School from the Bachelors of Science and Medical Degrees. Uh, during this time, it's allowed him to do some really fascinating things, uh, including uh, taking him to the sides of the Everest, skiing the Arctic, uh, and also uh, serving as a medical officer at the Royal Air Force and at NASA's Space, uh, Ken NASA's Space Kennedy Center. Um, after spending uh, some amount of time in the UK, perhaps a, a considerable amount of formative years in the UK, uh, Marcus returned to India and Mumbai in 2010 and has since then been very actively engaged in the health and life sciences um, uh, industry and has worked as a strategic advisor, investor, operator across the various gamuts of healthcare and well-being. Uh, more recently and relevant to all of us through the pandemic, uh, Marcus has been uh, brave enough to go back into the uh, into the uh, forefront as a frontline uh, volunteer for the city's fight against the coronavirus. And I'll let him uh, talk a little bit more about that. But more recently, uh, congratulations, Marcus, from on behalf of all of us in the real world, we have had a copy of your book sitting with us, uh, which is called The Human Edge, uh, which is around the title of today's uh, uh, talk. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, Rotarians, it's a pleasure to and privilege to invite Marcus, who is a published author, keynote speaker, digital talk show host, and host of other accolades that go with him. But I will stop there and not steal his thunder. But I also want to congratulate him on his uh, fantastic uh, 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 run at the Mumbai Marathon, which was held on Sunday. So congratulations, Marcus. You talked about your passion of uh, being a long distance ma a marathon runner. But it was really interesting to read that you also had the Guinness World Record for backward running. Uh, so with that, I'll stop and would like to welcome you again to the club. And we look forward to your uh, talk this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's really lovely to be here. And uh, if I may request to be able to share my screen, I've got a few slides that I wanted to bring up. Sure, uh, one moment. Yeah. So we've got what, around half an hour, you know? This, is, that, uh, is that how much time we have? Yeah, yeah, you have about half an hour, yes. Okay, cool. Half an hour and then questions and answers. Yeah, so I've got, I've got some slides that I will walk you guys through and then... Uh, uh, Marcus, you can, you can share the screen now. Yeah, there we are. It's coming up. Okay, as it comes up, uh, my focus, my intent, my entire career journey, and I've been very fortunate uh, to have had a, a whole spectrum of different experiences, has fundamentally been to try and understand how we can maximize the, op, you know, optimize this body and brain that we have. How can we make maximum advantage of this machine that we've been given by nature, both our physiology and our psychology? And my journey has been from sick care to well being. But along the way, what I've tried to do through the various stints uh, that I've had is focus on how we can biohack. And what that means is, what are the tiny things that you and I can do every single day that will just give us that little bit of a competitive edge and push ourselves in a positive direction in, in terms of whatever it is that we're trying to gain. So what I wanted to do with you all today was share with you 10, if we have time, otherwise maybe five or six, and then we can get into question and answers. Little biohacks that I try and do every single day, and it's so easy that each of you can do as well. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the science in terms of how it works and then in terms of what the benefits are to your body as well, okay? Before we start, let me just lay the foundation. So inside of your skull, you have the brain. The brain is 1.4 kilograms. It's probably nature's most complex organ that is, at least that we know, uh, that has been designed. And there are 87 billion, that's with a B, individual nerve cells. We call them neurons. Each of those 87 billion neurons are connected with 7,000 other neurons inside of your brain. So the mathematicians can very quickly tell you how many trillion quadrillions of connections we have. And the reason why these 
connections are so important is it's those that form the circuits and it's these circuits which form our thoughts which drive our behaviors which influence our habits and leads to our characters and so it's very important for us to recognize and understand what are those underlying neural circuits that we have because actually we can begin to change them as we age as well How do we go around making changes in our lives? So oftentimes people come to me and they say, Doc, you know, I want to run a marathon or I want to lose six kilograms or I want to gain a promotion in my job, etc. And I remind them that what they are telling me is a goal. It's not a habit, right? These are goals. And we each have many different goals that we set ourselves up in life. If we have a particular goal, there is an associated behavior with that. And I'll just stick with running as an analogy because it's easy to understand. So I want to run a marathon is my goal. The behavior that I need to imbibe as a person is I need to become a runner, right? That's what I need to associate with my characteristic and my personality. The habits which are associated, therefore, are one level below that. So a habit might be getting up to run every day or making sure that I work on my core or, you know, scheduling a series of half marathons and building up a schedule along that. So these are all the tiny little habits that sit under a particular behavior. And then finally, the smallest divisible component of that journey is the biohack. It's the tiny thing that I could do today, which will get me in the direction of habit. And if I do a lot of them, will, as I said, slowly lead to the behavior and allow us to obtain our goal. And the biohacks are many. So for example, biohacks around running, the simplest thing is owning a pair of running shoes, right? Unless you're doing barefoot running, which you may see me do on CCI lawns uh, a couple of mornings every week. So owning a pair of running shoes is one, or planning the route out the night before is a second, or ensuring our water bottle is full, full of water, et cetera, or registering for that half marathon. These are all tiny little hacks that we need to do, which are so simple that you can't fail if you have the intent of doing so, which cumulatively summate up into leading into a larger habit. So when it comes to the creation of habits in our lives, I have three very simple rules and you can click a photograph of any of the slides I'm going to show you, by the way. Rule number one is start small and start today. The biggest mistake people make is they tell me, Doc, this is fantastic. I'm going to start tomorrow. And I can give you in writing that 67% of individuals won't even begin that journey. Why? Because that's just the way our brains are, uh, are programmed and how we function. So think about what it is you want to do make it even smaller than that but make sure you start today that's the simplest way of ensuring you're building towards success the second tip is stack them up like you would paper cups think about this if i had a one kilogram weight and i had a paper cup in front of me if i put that one kilogram weight on top of the paper cup what will happen to the paper cup it'll it'll squash right the power, the, the, the weight upon it, the burden that it has to overcome is too great to withstand the force that's available to them. However, now, if I have 10 different paper cups and I lay them out on the table and now I put the one kilogram weight, what happens? The cups don't fall, they actually maintain the weight. And also, if I stack them up to build a long tower, then that consolidated force is also strong enough to overcome the weight. So in the same way, the resistances that we have in our lives to overcome the big challenges, if we can break them up into those tiny little steps and then start to stack them up, it, it helps us lead towards success. And the best way of forming a new habit is to link it to an existing one, right? So if I start to do one thing really well, then soon I have a second one which is linked onto that one and I start doing both of them really well, then I link the third and the fourth, etc. And the last piece when it comes to building habits is celebrating the wins. We have dopamine, which is the neurotransmitter inside of your brain, which is associated with that feeling of happiness that you get when you do something. And that hormone, that neurotransmitter is responsible for reinforcing the neural tract. So that's the link between two neurons, which was associated for that particular action. This is why 
unhealthy behaviors become so addictive, by the way. Things like smoking and alcohol and technological addictions, etc. These are things which are associated with dopamine and pretty soon they become our default pathways, which is why it's so difficult for them to break. So what I'm encouraging us each to do is to use the same neurochemistry, but this time use it to our advantage. So a celebration might be posting on an Instagram post or writing in your journal or going out for a meal with a friend to celebrate or just talking to an accountability partner. Figure out what it is that allows you to have that feeling of dopamine inside you and make sure you then do that when you complete something which is good for you. So these are my three very simple rules around how to utilize biohacks to your advantage. Okay, let's start with some biohacks. So I always talk about sleep because sleep is nature's most freely available performance enhancing drug, which we have to us, but which so, many, so few of us actually utilize to our advantage. Our evolution has designed for us a methodology that we need to have at least seven to eight hours of sleep every single day day and most people just concern themselves with the time that they have their head on the pillow so i'm here to remind you that sleep is a journey of three parts the 60 minutes before you put your head on the pillow the seven to eight hours whilst your head is on the pillow and then the 15 to 20 minutes immediately after you wake up in the morning all three of these play an important role of ensuring that you have a good restorative amount of sleep and you're feeling energized to take on the day ahead of you. Now, there are many different aspects of the physiology of sleep, and I just want to focus on one very simple one, which is the role of melatonin, which is the hormone which is responsible for making you go to sleep, right? It typically gets secreted towards the end of the day, and it's important because it tells your body that it's time for me to now to go, uh, time for me to now go to sleep. Unfortunately, digital devices, particularly the screens, emit blue light which suppresses, i.e. reduces the secretion of melatonin. So a fundamental aspect for ensuring that the melatonin levels are high is to ensure that for at least 30, hopefully 60 minutes before you go to bed at night, make sure you are not engaging with your digital devices, right? That's step number one. Step number two is the temperature at which you go to sleep is very important to how restful you feel when you wake up. The optimal temperature is between 18 to 19 degrees Celsius. So if you've got an air conditioner at home, make sure that that temperature set band is within that. If you're living, I know everyone is here in South Bombay, so it doesn't matter. But if you're traveling somewhere else up north and it's really cold, then ensure that you've got a heater or some sort of heavy blanket, etc. That temperature band is really important for you to get restorative sleep. So the biohack here for you to get a good amount of restorative sleep is disconnect from technology 60 minutes before you go to bed and ensure that your air conditioning is set to 18 to 19 degrees C so that you can get a good amount of sleep at night. Okay, habit hack number two, the role of exercise. Most of you would be very familiar with how important exercise is when it comes to your cardiovascular health, your physical health, the prevention and mitigation of diabetes and hypertension, cardiovascular diseases, etc. I'm here to, here to say, yes, that's important. And I reinforce that message, but also the role of exercise in our brain power and our mental agility. There is a hormone called BDNF, that's brain derived neurotrophic factor. And as you can see on the graph on the left, the secretion of BDNF increases when you undergo repeated steady state exercises. So that's walking, jogging, cycling, swimming things which have a very steady cadence. Your heart rate is typically between 60 to 70% of your maximal heart rate. That increases the secretion of BDNF. And BDNF acts in two ways. Number one is it increases the number of neural connections, which we learned about previously is important when it comes to our ability to think creatively. It also increases the length of the neural connection. So it literally increases the size of your brain. That's how important. And that's why getting steady state exercises is very good at preventing neurodegenerative disorders. That's diseases like Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, diseases which are associated with old age. So getting exercise in and starting in as young as 30 is very important so that you get those cumulative benefits as you grow older and older. And even if you are older, it's never too late to start. 
Okay, habit hack number three is the importance of the gut. Hippocrates, 400 BC, BC said, let medicine be thy food, let food be thy medicine. I remember when I was a medical student 20 years ago, I had one lecture on the microbiome in six years. That's all we had. And now if you look up, if you even just Google microbiome, you will literally see hundreds and thousands of papers which are submitted on this every, every year. A hundred trillion good bacteria, viruses, protozoa live inside of your gut. And their role is fundamental, not only to our physical health, but also how we feel emotionally and mentally as well. In fact, now we talk about the gut brain axis because those two to three kilograms of organisms that live inside of your gut are responsible for the creation and the secretion of many different types of chemicals and hormones, which lead to better mood, which re reduce your stress levels, which abates anxiety, and which overall leads to a higher state of productivity and performance. So I know your next question is gonna be, Doc, what do I need to eat? So I preempted that, and you can actually click a photograph of this because it's easier. What I've done is I've divided the slide into two. On the left-hand side, I've described what a typical plate should look like. How should you divide your plate in terms of macronutrients? That's your fruit and vegetable, which should be half of your plate. Your protein, preferably plant-based, should be one quarter. And then your carbohydrate should only be one quarter, right? This is a mistake we do in South Asia, where we have lots of rice, we have four or five chapatis and rotis, etc. We only require one quarter of our plate to be dedicated towards carbohydrates, preferably complex carbs with a high glycemic index. At least three liters of water every day and, and cold press uh, uh, healthy plant oils are the need of the hour. That's macronutrients. Now let's look at micronutrients. There are six fundamental micronutrients that you should have every day for good brain health. Vitamin C, B, vitamin D, omega-3, omega-6, and zinc. I've put a whole series of food groups, both Indian foods and Western palate foods that you can get these from. And if you can't, there is no harm in healthy supplements as well. You need to ensure that you're getting these six supplements, uh, uh, micronutrients every single day. Okay, habit hack number four is the power of breathing, right? Sleep was an easy one. It's freely available to us. We don't use it. Breathing, equally easier. In fact, even easier than that. Very much available to us. We do it all the time, every day to keep us alive, but we don't appreciate the underlying science. This is an MRI study of an individual which we looked at their brain activity before and after a deep breathing meditative exercise. You can see on the, on the images on the left, so the bright colors equate to high energy states. You can see how after a period of meditation, this subject immediately dropped their color uh, range to dark blues, blacks, uh, and grays. And that means they were much calmer. What was then done is then electrodes were put on the skull and they, we looked at the wave pattern formation, and you can see here that there was a migration from gamma wave activity, which is the pattern on the top, high amplitude, very messy frequency, to alpha wave, more sinusoidal, lower frequency, higher amplitude, better spread out. And this is the state of flow that we describe when you often say when you're in deep work, this is the state of flow that's associated with alpha brain activity, which comes through the very simple habit hack which is called box breathing. You breathe in for four counts, you hold your breath for four counts, you breathe out for four counts, and you repeat it four times. Now, why breathing is so important is because the fight and flight response, which is your stress response, part of the sympathetic nervous activity, well, there's always a yang to the yin, and our body has created a rest and digest part of the nervous system. It's called the parasympathetic nervous activity, nervous system, and the vagus nerve which is central to that, which innovates every single major organ uh, system, is activated through a deep breathing exercise, such as I just showed you with box breathing. So this is a very simple tool to use when you're feeling stressed or if you're about to step into a stressful situation, it literally takes 60 seconds to do. It's just four breaths in, hold for four, four breaths out, and then repeat four times. 
And that's all you need to do. This is a very interesting study, which was done by Stanford, looking at the role of breathing when it comes to memory function. It's a cross section of the brain. You can see that we've highlighted an area in very bright white here. This is the hippocampus. The hippocampus is basically your hard drive, right? Your, your medium to long-term memory inside of your brain. And subjects that underwent a meditative exercise for six weeks actually saw a increase in the volume of their hippocampus, i.e. they got better at memorizing, their memory function improved. So breathing is not just important in the acute setting when it comes to the alleviation of stress, it's also important in medium to long-term brain function, including memory capabilities and focus as well. All right. Habit hack number five is becoming unitaskers. You know, if I did this in a corporate environment, particularly with lots of young folks, and I asked the question, how many of you feel that you are good at multitasking? A lot of hands go up, particularly young women. They believe that they're really good at multitasking and it's celebrated in society as well. I'm here to tell you physiologically, that is a fallacy. There is no such thing as multitasking. What you're doing is you're sequentially moving from one task to the next in very rapid succession. But inevitably what happens is your ability to perform on each of those individual tasks actually goes down. This is a study that was done by my alma mater, University of London. It took three cohorts of people. They measured everyone's IQ level before starting. Let's say it was arbitrary at 100 just for the sake of conversation here. They gave one cohort of people substances, alcohol and cannabis, and they measured their IQ level and they saw IQ drop, roughly six to seven IQ points. They then subjected another cohort of people to two days of only limiting their sleep to four hours every night. So they were in a sleep deprived state. People with young toddlers like I, uh, Vinod, you know how we feel. You get this feeling in the morning where you're in this groggy cognitive fog almost. And this is the sleep deprived state. And again, the IQ level drop is six to seven IQ points, right? And it again reinforces how important sleep is to our performance and capability. They then gave the third group of people a set of series and tasks, which they were then monitoring their IQ level. But this time they had a digital device with them and they were pinging them with WhatsApp and messages, et cetera. In this group of people, they had the highest, i.e. the lowest IQ levels, the highest drop. It went to up to 12 IQ points, so double of sleep deprivation and substance abuse. This is how dangerous these devices are. Of course, there are lifeline now. We need them to communicate with the world. The fact that we're even meeting digitally now is a testament to that. But they have many invasive capabilities where they over overtake the brainstem. And we need to take back control of that. And there are some very simple hacks that you can do. The simplest of which I find is this one where you literally turn the color of your phone off and you switch it to grayscale. This immediately reduces the stimulus to the attractive stimulus of opening up every single time you have a message. The other thing you can do is just to put your notifications off. And the third thing, which is very powerful, particularly when you want to get into a deep work mode, is to actually turn airplane mode off. Of course, let your team know that you're gonna be doing this, let your family members know, and when you're gonna be coming out on the other side. But this will then help you to do some heavy, deep work when you want to. Okay, those are the five habit hacks that I thought I would share with you. I wanna leave plenty of time for Q&A as well so that uh, we can do that. Um, so let's do that, Ashley, you know, let's, because uh, I'm, I'm cognizant of your time as well. Let's get some questions going and then I can talk about some of the other things uh, through that as well. Thank you, Marcus. Uh, that was fabulous. Uh, very good short tips. Though we wish it went on and on, you know, we wanted to hear a lot more. But uh, still, uh, let us open the question and answer uh, for now. And uh, may I ask the first question uh, that, uh, you know, you mentioned uh, uh, switching off the phone uh, 60 minutes before sleeping, which most people don't do at all ages. We all uh, switch off the phone whilst we are going to sleep, I think. It goes off on its own. Uh, but, now the, but what about TV? Television is okay if you watch TV and then go to sleep soon after? 
No, all 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 digital devices uh, emit the blue light, which has a suppression of melatonin. Right. There are a couple of things that you can do and and be cognizant of. The easiest thing, by the way, when it comes to your phone, is actually not have your phone with you. So don't have your phone sleep next to you. What we do in our home is very simple. We have all of our chargers in the living room. So literally, there is no reason to take the phone into the bedroom. They charge overnight outside in the living room. We have a we have a landline so that our parents can get hold of us or any loved one can get hold of us in an emergency and they're the only ones that have that number but that allows us to have restorative sleep we've also removed all we don't have a tv in the bedroom anymore in fact we've never had one uh, in this house um, there's only a, a tv in the living room so our, our bedroom is basically a, a device free zone it's very important because we got young kids and we want to inculcate these habits for them uh, as well so these are simple things which literally force you to disconnect from the technology when it comes to TV, obviously OTT, Netflix, uh, Disney, Hotstar, these Amazon Prime, these are all things which are consuming our evenings nowadays. What you can do is ensure that you're consuming good types of media. And by that, I mean programs which are more positive, optimistic, happy, rather than the darker, pessimistic, negative thoughts that we uh, that would be subject to. Because what you do in the last few moments before you go to sleep is actually stays with you subconsciously as through the day you start to uh, uh, look into those aspects. So that's very important. So these are a couple of the simple things that you can do around phone. Reading, and reading a book is fine. Book is fine. Book is actually fantastic. Yeah. So long as there's not a, a Kindle book, maybe. Yeah. yeah. So the Kindle now has that widescreen uh, backlit uh, version, which is available. But otherwise, physical books are, are great. You're welcome. Anybody for further questions? Yeah, I just asked, how do you make your phone grayscale? Uh, if, color? Yeah, if you have an Apple device, it's pretty easy to do that, actually. Uh, I don't know what it's like on Android, but... Uh, on Apple? Yeah, I'm just looking it up. Yeah, you go to, uh, actually, I just quickly Googled it. There's just four things. You go to settings, accessibility, display, and then color filters. And then grayscale is is, uh, is one of them. But you can Google it. It's okay. very simple to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. got it. Got it. Thank you. No worries. So are you a doctor by medical uh, profession or medical? Yes, doctor? yes, yes, yes. PhD, yeah. PhD doctor. No, no, medical doctor. Oh, really? That's nice. Nice any any uh, questions? Uh... Yeah, v Vicky, just one question from my side, Bernhard here. Um, uh, a, of course, very interesting, and I tried to click the screen, but uh, it doesn't work very well. Can we, can we have your presentation? Is that possible? That would be one question. And the second question is, you know, nowadays we may even switch, uh, sort of not use the phone, etc., but we still use it as our alarm, and that's why it's somewhere in the bedroom. Uh, so, shall we just buy a traditional alarm that is ticking, or what should we do? Absolutely. For 150 rupees on Amazon, you can get a very effective old-fashioned alarm. It's what we have at home. And uh, of course, I will share all the hacks with Vicky and he with Vinod, and he can uh, he can circulate it amongst all of you. Yeah. Great, great. And where do we get your book? Because we cannot see it there. It's available on Amazon, uh, Amazon India. Here it is. At the Human Edge, it's, it's just been released last week uh, and it's on Amazon India. Yeah. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. I'm signing all the January books. So if you get it this week, then, uh, then I'm, uh, I'm working with my publishers to sign all of them. Yeah. Vicky, we, we can you punch your books to the club for you to sign. Yes. <laughs> I've been doing that most evenings, actually. Members have been grabbing me. And getting me and, yeah. and no signing yeah. digitally, huh? Please. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm a, I'm a pen and paper guy. No, no, no. I'm not. Yeah. And and please share your contacts uh, with us because, yeah. for instance, I would I have a few other questions which I do not need yeah. to ask you now, but I would like yeah. to get in touch with you. I'll do that. I'll send it on that hack sheet. I'll have all my contact details there as well. Yeah. yeah. Lovely. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Any further questions? So, uh, 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 for some reason, this has been a uh, sleepy uh, January. Manoj, you want to ask a question? 
No, I'll catch him at the club. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'll ask one more question, uh, Vicky. Okay, hundred dollars. Okay, done. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, please, you, please, you. Take the melatonin tablets. Melatonin tablets are effective for uh, <laughs> jet lag, and I think they should be. Uh, they should be tried to be. Uh, are you asking to help you sleep? Is that what the what the question? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, melatonin is, is great for jet lag. I, I don't uh, recommend it use being used on a more regular cadence because what happens, uh, Aditi, is that as you take exogenous uh, melatonin, then your internal supplies actually begins to drop and reduce. So your yeah. body gets right. used to that. Um, okay. And there are more effective ways of improving your sleep journey and hygiene rather than that uh, medication. Yeah. Thank you. Dr. Marcus, but which areas? Do you recommend it while traveling, Marcus? Sorry? Do you recommend it when traveling internationally, you know, covering over time zones, uh, the melatonin tablets? Yeah, particularly when traveling, uh, um, uh, when traveling uh, over like more than five to six time zones, then it becomes uh, effective. I've never, I've never honestly used it myself. So I've got a very simple regime which is wherein as soon as I get on the aircraft, I try and align myself with the new time zone. I make sure I do a run as when I get there in that daytime so that I'm getting a lot of uh, good energy flowing through the system. And then I try and sleep uh, 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 at the normal time. And then it takes me about 24 hours to then cycle through. So I've never had to use melatonin myself. Just It's just a preference for me, yeah. Uh, you know, you mentioned uh, if there is no other question, I'll ask uh, yeah. uh, a, a very important question, but uh, the final question. And uh, you mentioned no electronic devices in the room is the best way uh, to uh, to lead a nice and healthy uh, life uh, forward. But can we keep a, the what about the bar? Can we have a bar in the room? <laughs> No comment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I must thank you. Uh, this is a really, very uh, excellent uh, uh, talk, and uh, we really enjoyed. Uh, can you share with us that how do you uh, uh, give this in the future? Uh, do you give it as a, a, as a, as a professional uh, nutritionist, or uh, how, how does one contact you? No, so my main work is uh, is to corporate. So I work with uh, with large organizations to create programs, uh, advocacy, interventions, workshops, uh, coaching. Uh, that's that's where I spend the majority of my time. Of course, I do a lot of work with the media uh, with regard to different content creation, uh, uh, etc. Uh, so I'll I'll share the links of things on on the on the hack sheet so that if. If people want to explore doing types of interventions for their teams or for their organizations, then, then I'm more than happy to, to have those chats with folks as well. Yeah. Okay, definitely. So uh, it's a pleasure uh, to have you here today. And we all really enjoyed your talk and we have learned a lot. And uh, we have also been reminded of uh, good practices that we should follow. And uh, since we keep forgetting these practices, it's important that uh, we are reminded again and again, and um, uh, we are so grateful and so nice to see uh, a young face talking to us today. And uh, hopefully when we start our physical meetings, once again, uh, Marcus, we would love that you join us at the Taj uh, over a lunch. And uh, maybe you can speak again over there through okay. a large gathering. Absolutely. Uh, ho hopefully those days are not very far. Not too far. I hope no new variant comes out from somewhere out of the blue. And uh, so again, uh, if I may, before I close, I'm thanking you as a closure, but still, do you have any recommendations uh, against for the, for the virus? What is the best way to stay safe? Is it a vaccine? In, in fact, Vicky, if I may interject, uh, Marcus, do you have any advice to all of us about the vaccine? Exactly. If it's available to us, should we take it? You know, a lot of controversies about whether one should, should or shouldn't. Yes, that's a valid question. It is. It is. Um, okay. And this is not being recorded, right? Everything I'm saying is off the record. Uh, so... Just one moment. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a recorded